In this video, we'll be looking at the ADC of LPC 2378. So the ADC, uh, there is physically only one ADC inside the LPC microcontroller. The one inside LPC 2378, it is an eight-channel ADC. That means he can take up to eight analog inputs, but internally he will be using an analog multiplexer uh, to choose one of the inputs and convert it into digital format. The output digital is 10 bit. The reference voltage for the ADC is 3.5 volt. That means the input that you are giving here, the analog input, it shouldn't be more than uh, 3.5 volt. It may tolerate up to 5 volt, uh, but the output might be wrong. But if you give too much high voltage, uh, you might be damaging the chip. So keep that in mind. Always give a voltage less than 3.5 volt. Now the ADC, it needs a, a clock because it is using successive approximate method to convert from analog to digital format. So that requires a clock and that clock frequency should be less than 4.5 megahertz. So these are the uh, basic overview. Now, as usual, first of all, if you want to enable ADC, uh, by default, it is turned off. You have to set P12 in the P con P register. Uh, in addition to P con P register, we have to set one more bit that we will be seeing later, so-called the power down bit. So first of all, let's set the P con P register bit 12 to 1. Okay, so writing it in a new file. Again, I'm not following any of the good uh, design methods here since this is a demonstration. So we'll say like peak on P is 0x only bit 12. That means I can simply over my peak on P. I don't want to modify other bits with the 3000. This will make the 12th bit as one. So let's save it as, okay, ADC. ADC has a lot of modes. So for the time being, let me save it as software control software triggered what it means will be clear to you when we come to that point okay so i set the p con p register next step as usual you have to configure the input so as i mentioned this has eight channels for the demo i am planning to use only one of the channels channel zero that is 23rd pin of port 0. So we need to configure pin cell 1 register bit 14 and 15 to 0 1 because it's alternate function 1 uh, to enable channel 0 of this ADC. That means this pin will be connected to the ADC. Okay, so that's what we need to do next. So we will say like pin cell register 1 and I want to modify only with 15 and 14 so we will add it with the mask as usual 0x 0 1 2 3 4 f 3 then 3 f it will mask those two bits then we will write 4 0 0 0 to make those bits to 1 0 that's also done now the p clock so as i mentioned before the clock to the adc should be less than 4.5 megahertz so currently in Kiel, uh, our microcontroller, he is going to work on the internal RC oscillator whose frequency is 4 megahertz. So even the default setting here, CCLK by 4 will be giving 1 megahertz. So that's good enough. Even if your external crystal frequency is 12 megahertz, if you do this, it will be 3 megahertz. Still, it will satisfy. If you have very high frequency like the 48 megahertz, just using the default won't be enough. You will have to further divide that clock using another register. So I'm not touching my PCLK. I'm going to operate on the default clock of CCLK by 4, which is 1 megahertz here. Next, we'll have to configure the interrupt register. Again, you have the option to set a global interrupt. That means if conversion happens on any of these eight channels, you will get an interrupt, or you can go for individual uh, channel interrupt, because sometimes uh, you want to get an interrupt if conversion happens on any channel. In some cases you want to get interrupt on certain channel and on certain channels you want to operate using polling mode. That's why we have the option for global interrupt as well as individual interrupt bit. I'm going for channel zero, individual interrupt. So I'll set only this bit to one. So interrupt register for ADC will be here.
okay so this is a dc row interrupt enable register so i will write just one to that okay i set the interrupt now is the main guy which is the adc control register so there are a lot of bits here first of all if you want to enable any channel you need to configure it using these first eight bits the cell field now adc has multiple operating mode okay so in one of the operating modes which we call as the software control mode at one time only one of the channels should be enabled okay so you enable one channel he will finish conversion on that channel and it will take 11 clock cycles adc clocks to do that conversion after that you will get an interrupt then okay if you wish you can enable a different channel and start conversion there in my case i want to use a single channel so i will set only this bit as one and i'm never going to change it if you want to use two channels first you will set this to one do a conversion uh, once it is done you will make this bit equal to zero and set this bit okay so in my case i will make this bit one that is one thing uh, second one clock div this is the register or a part of the register which is used for further dividing the clock frequency going to the adc uh, again, as I mentioned, the maximum frequency should be less than 4.5 megahertz. So if simply by configuring PCLK register, if you can't get that frequency, if you want to further reduce it, you can use this part, 8 to 15. But in our case, uh, the frequency is already 1 megahertz, so no need to set it. Okay, this is the bit which chooses between software control mode or burst mode. So as I mentioned, if it is software control, you can have only one bit set here. If you are using burst mode, you can have multiple channels enabled at the same time and ADC will be operating in something called as hardware scan mode. So first he will convert uh, the first channel, whichever is set to, in a, set to one. Then once that is finished, he will do the second channel so and so forth so the burst mode we will see later for the time being we will keep the burst bit as zero and we'll be operating in software control mode this clks it has significance only in burst mode so we'll discuss later power down okay this is the additional bit which you should keep high if you want to enable the adc if you make it zero it will be in power down mode and it will be turned off so for turning on the adc first you need to configure p on p register then set this bit to one when you want to turn off adc first make this bit to zero then make p on p uh, register bit number 12 to zero yeah so that's the order now the start okay this field basically decides when an unlocked digital conversion should start if you are operating in software control mode so we are in software control mode not in burst mode so this field has the significance again uh, you can choose two modes here whether the conversion should be software triggered or whether the conversion should be hardware triggered if you want a software triggered one that means the conversion is started using software you need to set these three bits as 001 in hardware triggered mode uh, you can see we have different combinations here that means maybe you want to start a conversion when you get an external signal on the capture interface so that you can set or you can uh, do a conversion whenever a match operation happens so those are the cases we are going to call as hardware triggered again this tutorial we are going to look at software triggered so we are interested only in this case 001 now the edge this has meaning only when you are in hardware triggered mode but we are in software triggered mode so this is again don't care so altogether i will set one here everything else zero here everything else zero the actual value with which the clock will be divided will be the value you set here plus one so by default it is zero so it will be divided by one burst bit will be zero all these bits are zero we'll make this bit to one we'll make these bits to zero zero one so finally we'll have control register which is ad0 control register is 0x 0 1 2 1 2 3 4 1 okay only channel 0 is enabled we are in software triggered mode and power down bit is set to one. okay so once we set this condition uh, since it says like okay start conversion now from software we have already set it 
he will do the conversion and after 11 clock cycles we are supposed to get an interrupt since we don't have interrupt service routine uh, i will still work on polling mode so first uh, let me go to an infinite loop then inside that i am going to check whether the bit is set or not how do i know that for that we need to look at the adc status register which is this one so here we have the done bit so if conversion is completed on any of the a channels the corresponding bit will set here we have enabled it only on one channel so this bit will set here once the conversion is completed or run basically means adc did a conversion but before you read the result of that conversion next conversion happens so this is some kind of error under that case also you will get an interrupt okay but we are looking only at this bit and this is like global interrupt which will be set if interrupt happens on any of the channels okay in a sense we are in polling mode i will be constantly looking at this bit this rightmost bit whether it is one or not so i will stay in the while loop while that bit is zero so we have status register here it is zero status register and i want to look only at that last bit so zero x one two three four five six seven one while it is zero i will just stay in the while loop once it sets i will come out of the while loop now what will i do after coming out of the while loop i will read the result of the conversion so the result of the conversion is stored in the adc data register there are eight such registers corresponding to eight channels the converted data the 10 bit data it is not starting from bit 0 but it is starting from bit 6 till bit 15 for the future expansion here this also has the done bit uh, which is actually a copy of the bit in the status register it's actually vice versa the bit in the status register is a copy of this done bit and a copy of this overrun bit now to clear these bits uh, they are really clear so acknowledging the interrupt is like reading from this register okay so reading from this register will clear these two bits which uh, actually means it will clear the interrupt there is no separate register where you will write to clear the interrupt just reading here is enough it's read clear so it is going to give the converted data now remember that converted data will not provide you the direct input voltage for that uh, i guess you know we will have to use the equation so the maximum value using the 10 bit adc is 1023 at that time the input voltage will be v rough so a unit of one here represents v rough divided by 1023 now the converted value if i represent it just as c or something the input voltage will be given by this equation okay so using this equation you can find out what is the analog input coming to the adc now what i will do is uh, i will do this conversion and try to display it using the leds connected to port one okay i'm not going to use port zero this time uh, because again the adc is coming through port zero so i assume leds are on port one and use them for display okay so what you have to do uh, you need to read from that data register it is zero data register we read it but remember okay the actual data is starting only from here okay so we need to right shift this entire result by six bits so we need to choose only this much 16 bits then right shift it by six position so that we just get the converted data so to get that 16 bits i can do like 0 x f f f f which will mask all the higher bits higher 16 bits with zero okay so we have it we right shift it by six position that will give me the conversion data let's say like converted data is this one so let's just declare it as int type then from this data i will find the actual voltage okay so that will be actually maybe a float type so we can say like voltage is this equation v rough which is 3.3 in our case we can globally declare this 
vref is okay 3.3 so vref divided by 1023 because it's 10 bit if you wish you can declare that also uh, at the top times this converted data that will give me the actual input voltage now for accurate conversion you know C one of them should be a floating point number so that this becomes floating point so let's say like 1023.0 for better accuracy now this will be a floating point number I cannot directly display it using the LEDs. Maybe the integer part of it I can display. Okay. Because internally the floating point number will be represented using that uh, IEEE floating point number representation, which you cannot directly send to it. You can send, but it won't make much sense. Okay. So I will just display the integer part of it using an LED. Later when we have the LCD display, uh, we can display the entire number there. So I'm going to use IO pin one there so let me set the direction at the top itself so are you okay dar1 as output one two three four five six seven eight and i can say are you okay pin one is this voltage okay so here we started conversion we went to this infinite while loop we waited until the conversion is over we took that converted data from the data register then we converted into the actual voltage value and we displayed it on the led and went back to the while loop and again waiting for the intro so let's see whether this switch is working first then we will proceed further so let me add this to the source group And let me remove this input capture and I have enabled it for target build my previous tutorial I am disabling it for target build okay it is already done okay compile okay semicolon we need okay now let's start debug uh, we don't need timer this time we'll need gpio one because i am sending the output there now the input to the adc it is coming through some pin but you cannot configure it by clicking here okay so the check mark here is giving whether the signal there is high or low in digital Okay, uh, that means if you are using those pins, the only voltage values that you can give is either zero or high, uh, which is like 3.3 volt. Only these two options are there. So they are not quite interesting. We want to test the in-between values also. So if you go to peripherals and if you choose AD converter, okay, so our AD converter comes here. There at the bottom, you have the option to give the inputs. Okay, so when you are doing it in lab on a physical chip, you will be giving input through the pins. Uh, for channel zero, we have seen like you'll be giving it through pin 23 of port zero. But here for simulation, if you want to give some input, any analog voltage between zero to 3.5, 3.3 volt, here you can see where V rough is 3.3. You can give it less than 3.3 also. When you build your own PCB, you can put a 2 volt or 1.5 volt, depending upon what is the maximum input voltage that you're expecting, which will improve the accuracy also if you're expecting a lower voltage from a sensor. And you can give the inputs here. For channel zero, you can just give input here. Okay, so first time, let's do step by step. So P con P, pin cell AD, interrupt enable. Okay, so now you can see this bit got set here because interrupt is enabled. AD0 control register, you can see power down, that bit got set and the start condition became now and uh, other ones we are not much interested. Okay, let's go to that infinite while loop, then we went to this while loop and you can see here after some time, this is global data and status register, which we haven't seen, we'll see it. Uh, look here, this is AD0 data register, there the done bit became high, okay? So we were in this while loop until this bit became high, 
Okay, let's go further. Here I am reading from that register AD0, D0. So you'll see like as soon as I read from there, this bit got unchecked. So it's like we cleared the interrupt. And we calculated the voltage and it came to the output pin. Now I didn't give anything here, so input voltage is zero. So of course that output also it is zero. Okay. So let's try once more. This time I will run it in one shot. So let me make this as one. I'm giving an input voltage of one. If you try to give four or something, you need to give the value and click outside. The simulator will give you an error saying like, okay, maximum value is 3.6, he's saying, but ideally shouldn't be more than your VRAF. Okay, so let's give one volt and see what happens. I resetted everything and run. And when I uh, run it, you can see, okay, the output here is just one. This is after all conversion. So this is basically saying the input is one volt. So if I give 1.5 volt, because we are sending only the integer part, it will be still one. But if I give like, okay, 2.2 something, and if I run it, here you can see it is two. Okay. So basically it is working. But now at runtime, if I change it to one, it is not reflecting here. If I make it three, it won't reflect here, okay? So what you need is the triggering condition. So here I have told this is software triggered. That means when you write 001, he will start conversion. So he'll start conversion, he will finish it, you will get an interrupt. If you want to do one more conversion next time, you are supposed to rewrite the same 001 here, then only he will start again. Otherwise he will do a single conversion and he will stop. So what we need, whatever we wrote to the control register here, ideally you just have to change only these bits so you can read, mask, write back. But of course you will be writing the same value since we are writing all 32 bit values here. So we can do it like this. Okay. So I am re-triggering at the end of Okay, sending that values to the pin. Okay, so let's let's restart and see this time. Okay, by default it is zero, so it is zero. Now let me make it one here, and you can see it became one. Now you'll see like this keeps on blinking, okay? Because he's saying he's done. I'm reading that value, I'm writing back, I'm re-triggering. That's why it keeps on blinking. And if I make it two now, okay, now you'll see it immediately became two. If I make it three, yeah, it became three. So basically he's detecting it. So we'll do one more thing and then we'll stop. This is not related to the LPC ADC, but practically how we might be using an ADC. Okay, so if you have a microcontroller, we will use an ADC with some kind of sensor. So let's say I have a temperature sensor, some kind of transducer, which will convert our temperature into some voltage. And I have connected that to the microcontroller. In our case, channel zero of AD0. AD0.0, it is connected. See on the temperature sensor, it measures temperatures between zero to say 100 degrees Celsius. It can be negative also. But using LEDs, I cannot show negative numbers now. So that's why I am starting with zero. And this is the range of temperature it can measure. And the corresponding output for this is zero to 3.3 volt. If the temperature is zero, this output voltage is zero. If temperature is 100, output voltage is 3.3 volt. Now this is a real scenario how it will work. So what I need is I need to display the temperature using those LEDs, not just the voltage. So whatever equation we wrote using that, we will get the voltage. From that voltage, uh, we will have to get the temperature value. Okay, so no big deal. So 3.3 volt represents 100 degrees Celsius. So one volt will represent 
100 divided by 3.3 so if the output of ADC is V volt okay the temperature can be calculated using this equation okay this is the case everywhere uh, common condition now I can bring this information here and I can do the temperature measurement so let's again declare the uh, max temperature everything as defined so that if you want to change it later you can easily change it so max temperature is 100 and max output voltage sensor max output voltage from sensor is 3.3 volt it can be anything okay again it would be same as your VRF could be less than your VRF shouldn't be more than your VRF that's what I mentioned so if this voltage maximum voltage is only 2 volt you'll put your VRF just as 2 volt because that will improve the resolution of your ADC okay so, yeah so now I can bring that equation here so instead of voltage here I can calculate temperature so again since I going to display only the integer part let's declare it like int so that temperature is what our voltage we got here times whatever is the maximum temperature divided by okay our sensor okay so this will give us since we are taking only integer part of it let me type cast this to int after this operation okay remember to put this bracket otherwise he will just convert the voltage to integer and do this which will reduce the accuracy okay so we are done let's test it now oh, i forgot to assign it to the output it's no warning here okay let's assign it to the output now test okay so now it is running suppose my input from the sensor is 3.3 volt okay let's see the output is this one which is okay one one triple zero one one which is 99 okay some loss of accuracy is there because rounding off but it is more or less correct we are supposed to get 100 if that is the case if the input is say 1.65 which is half of the maximum you can see this is the output which is 1100150 this time it is correct so input voltage is half of the maximum so the temperature is half of whatever the maximum value the sensor can sense okay so if your sensor can sense negative temperatures also you will have to add that offset here when you do the calculation i hope you uh, know that part so we'll stop this tutorial here in the next one we'll see software control but hardware triggered conversion thank you